Yo, 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 what's up? Welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is episode 621. 621. <laughs> yes. Dang, I'm just trying to get started. <laughs> hey, it's all good, bro. <laughs> But yeah, I got a special guest tonight by the name of Mr. Zeke Thomas, aka the Breakfast Man. What's going on? What's going on, <laughs> Mr. 1804? Yeah, appreciate man. being here. Yeah, thank you, man. And, and I really appreciate you for stopping by. Yeah, appreciate you having me, man. man. No problem, man. And it's just you know nice to meet new people and stuff like that. And just. We, we were supposed to been, you know what I'm saying, done this, but hey, it's all about God, man. He was the final saying everything. I ain't have to work tonight. Last night I had to work, man. I say work, man. You gotta work. A uh, head yeah, you gotta. You gotta get some coins, man. So, how about you give us like a brief description of yourself? Uh, man, Zeke Thomas, born and raised here in Saginaw, uh, 80s baby. You know, so, uh, Grew up around a, a great culture of basketball. Uh, my dad coach, brother played, coaches now. Uh, my sister played, she coached for a little while. I played college level, high school, and, uh, and I came back and, and actually started coaching uh, reluctantly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, outside of that, uh, doing you know, there's some connections with some young men around here that played the game, and they asked me to continue coaching. And I've been coaching since, shoot, I've been 21, 22, and I just turned 37 this last uh, September. Oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, man, we need more people like you, man. Like, I can tell, like, you were a good role model and stuff like that. You're a leader. Like, I've been watching you for a couple of years, you know what I'm saying? Not on no stalker shit. No, I understand. <laughs> like, it's all, you know, it's all social media, you know, it's all yeah. public. Yeah, no doubt, you know, and, and I and I just love to just bring people that's doing something in the community and stuff. And just to, you know, get you guys spotlight who deserves it because we need to celebrate our leaders and our winners and same at the same time just um, give these kids, like especially these young men, that you can be anything you want yeah, and stuff like that. It's definitely uh, and, uh, a great blessing, man. I was able to touch. I don't talk about it a lot. Uh, you know, I'm kind of one of the guys that just do what's, you know, the job that needs to be done and get the, the youth out there and, and keep on moving. Uh, whatever accolades or whatever the case that comes with it, that's cool. I'm just, you know, man, get these guys away from some of the things that they always been doing when we were traveling. And now I'm going to try to get back into basketball training. Because a lot of people talking about where the game is at. Uh, over the few years, I've been away from it a little bit, just working. So I want to get back into that, you know, to the love of it for sure. Yeah, that's good. Um, how about you give us a brief, like about your upbringing? How was that like? Upbringing, man. So uh, to actually tell the truth, man, I have to start with my grandparents. I had two set of grandparents back, man. I couldn't even ask for better grandparents. Uh, uh, hard working from the south, uh, traditional type family. You know, my mom's side had a huge family, my dad's side, not so big, four brothers, or three brothers, I should say, it's four of them. 13 of my mom and them. Uh, so, well, my grandparents, man, the hard working and the values that they instilled in my, my parents, uh, I couldn't ask for better. Uh, like, my mom and dad was there working hard as well, you know, it wasn't easy. Like I say, uh, they work hours, many hours, many jobs, just to you know provide for us. And I couldn't complain on uh, my upbringing. Uh, had the opportunity to travel, play at AAU basketball across the country uh, at a younger age. Uh, Played in the band, did like loose groups. Uh, like had my own. Uh, what they call it solo with my band in elementary downtown the Martin Luther King events. Man, karate, art, everything, man. So 
uh, I owe a lot to them. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I definitely could be better, you know, as a person. So, uh, and I'm always striving to do that. But uh, my parents, man, uh, was real solid. Uh, was bringing to my older siblings, my older sister. She's a lawyer. Uh, yeah. Law degrees. Okay. My second oldest sister, uh, she has degrees of the Yahoo. She taught me in Dallas, and she came back and got so many nursing certificates and degrees. So she was going to do a job on a nursing job. Uh, my oldest brother, or my older brother, uh, graduated with honors. He's in the Hall of Fame at our uh, old uh, college, Albion College. And he has won three of five state championships. He's turning another program around as we speak. Uh, so, upbringing uh, was pretty cool at, at home, like I say. I uh, spent a lot of time over at my grandmother's house uh, in the Lapeer district area. And that's where I played basketball and met all my friends. Uh, at Vets Park, playing at Vets Park. Uh, you know, like guys like... Uh, you know, Tucker, Tucker, yeah. Uh, Tucker was younger, but he was always in the mix. Uh, Paul, Blunt, that's uh, even going to live live stream and stuff too. Uh, yeah, man, uh, Julie, 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 that would really motivate uh, me on the basketball scene, just going there every day. Uh, shouts out to Coach Lawrence uh, from Heaven Rich. He really uh, dedicated a lot of time at that park, uh, cleaning it up, uh, helping you know helping us with our game, you know uh, feeding us because we was up there from the morning to night. So it was pretty cool. Uh, outside of that, man, I was pretty normal as a kid. Uh, had behavior issues in school, got good grades. You know, just was you know class clown type deal. Kind of rebellious. <laughs> man, I believe that's everybody, man. You know? And I just think we're rebellious or whatever. We just we just learn how to just um, grow. We just learn how to become new and become just a shell of ourselves and yeah. stuff like that. And people just like to you know compare others to just what you're supposed to be. Yeah. But I believe that a class clown is just very charismatic. Yeah. And stuff that just don't matter. We lie. You know what I'm saying? But I was really a class clown because I went to Solana and stuff. Yeah. So I used to get bullied a lot and stuff at the fight and stuff like that. So the people that I was scared of, and so I used to make them laugh and stuff and make them forget that they were supposed to fight me. Like, what are you supposed to be doing again? <laughs> No, for real, man. I, I was just, man, get done with my work so fast, and I had so much time to just, you know. Then I had, I had some close friends that was pretty funny too, man. And we get together, and we get in the same class, and it's just pretty, pretty wild. But you know, that, that uh, like I say, man, coming up, I graduated in 2004, man. That whole era, man, it was just a lot of fun within because we had to have our fun within. Because it was a lot of people that uh during that time was really turning up in these streets. You know what I mean? So uh yeah. you know, we have to stay clear of that. I mean, I'm talking about people who's you know really dying, You're like, you know, my age and younger, older, so you know, we have to you know, sports and just having your fun with your your, your, your crew of guys or whatever the case is kinda of pivotal for us around here during that time. We're trying to get out and go to college. So that was uh real blessing during that time for me. That's what's up, and the question for you is, growing up in Saginaw, like, what's your perspective on it? Because we always get, like, a bad rap of our city and stuff, but it was different for everybody. Man, I feel like, don't you know when you go get a goldfish and you put it in a little bowl? Yeah. And you dress up whatever it is in that bowl, that's all that little fish might know for that whole life. So, like, growing up when I was little, I grew up in Birch Park, and my dad away drive to my grandma house like I said I just spent a lot of time over there and just going down Genesee passing VIP at a young age and passing some of the you know the bigger not so big uh, buildings or whatever because you don't stay in a huge area but just seeing uh I took a real pride in Saginaw early like I, I so I don't I don't try to negative tie you know Saginaw 
I just, like, when I was little, I didn't know anything else besides traveling and stuff like that. And I just said, shoot, this is, this is home, you know. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Uh, I know there's some things that need to be done, uh, that can be done. I would say this past year, actually, let's shout out to, like, I see Terry Reed just uh, chimed in. So, like, guys like him, uh, Jeffrey Bulls, I can name so many others. Uh, that did so many events this past year. I didn't attend because, like I said, I was working a lot and had my daughters and stuff like that this summer. But I just seen like the, the kickoff, like events like that, man. Uh, really a step in the right direction. And it, and, it, and I hate that violence, you know, what I'm saying, kind of outshadows that, you know, because it's only a small group of people that's doing that. Uh, but it's, it's some people that's really, uh, you know, trying to. Move the city forward, man. And, uh, like I say, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be an uphill battle one day at a time. Uh, I mean, hopefully this new school will be a, a staple in the community where we can kind of come together. That'd be nice. Uh, you know, we got the Arthur Hill Saginaw High event, uh, the tailgate event. That's what you know. That was you know, uh, I know it was outshadowed by you know a few things. Yeah. Maybe we could have did some things for the kids. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I understand that. You know, we was all kids once. Yeah. But that event was crazy. Like, it was no event like that. <laughs> and, like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen nothing like that. So, if we can continue to build, and uh, I think, you know, you just got to feed it to the younger generation. So, they got a choice to go left or right. And if we can uh, keep showing them the right way, you know, it'll be a no-brainer situation for them. You know, no doubt. And it'd be really hard because it's like, People don't want to stand up or say anything or do something about it because first they will be criticized, then it becomes ostracized, and then it just be a whole lot of pressure. Yeah. Because anybody who wants to do something different and go beyond the norm will be judged and persecuted. And it's like, well, I just try to, you know, tell everybody that change ain't easy, but it's necessary. You're speaking to the right one about being persecuted yeah. around here, you know, some of the things, like, you know, like, I, I don't want to get into it too much, but like I say, uh, standing up and trying to do the right things and between the arguments and, like, uh, you have to have a strong personality, you don't have to have a strong foundation uh, to, to try to change something, you, you, got, you know, and that's what people don't understand, you're going to have to take some of that, you know, that's what comes with the territory, you know. I can just speak for like conversations with my brother uh, going into different schools and starting off on a championship run even though his work is you know, everybody knows how great of a coach he is he still has to prove himself for some reason <laughs> you know what I mean so you always gotta prove yourself I understand but there's nothing wrong with standing up for yourself and, uh, and uh, taking things and especially if you're doing right like you know what I mean there's so many people that's a position to do the right thing, they just don't, you know? Uh, so I take my hats off to anybody that's struggling to do the right thing or struggling to, you know, do change or change the narrative in their lives or the lives around them because it's hard work for sure. Yeah, and it's just also, it's just dedication, discipline, and you can't just expect new things when you're doing the same thing <laughs> and i just you know i just really just you know when people ask me about this platform and ask me just with the show yes yeah. and starting the podcast you know first thing i always tell them is you have to start waking up early in the morning and even if you're not an early bird you have to be prepared for that because where you want to go no matter what you do, you have to get up in the morning, like grind it early and, and just grind it out. Because sometimes it's like, because when I have to work my regular job, whether if it's like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I get up at 4 in the morning, or I get up at 5 in the morning, and just, you know, start like topics or make thumbnails or just, you know, work on getting new guesses and stuff like that. So it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday Day process, just don't go off. So it's just everybody think about that social life and stuff and wonder why they still in that same position. And I'd be on third shift. 
with my laptop. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, I'm putting a website together for a few things, my basketball training, uh, a podcast, yeah. whatever the case. Um, I'm just getting, you know, making flyers. I'm hosting an event after the Saginaw High Arthur Hill game, uh, Valentine's Day, yeah. uh, with a couple of my partners that went to school with me, uh, D'Angelo Trice. Actually, get with him. He's having uh, some, some great seminars. Uh, D'Angelo Trice, uh, okay. um, sports betting. So it's a lot of people sports betting, uh, and they are really, man, I'm telling you, he's really good at it. Like, actually, before COVID, that's yes, his main source of income. Yeah. COVID messed him up, like, for real. He sat on my couch and showed me exactly what was up. Uh, I really don't sports bet right now just because one of my homeboys that's in Dallas, Texas right now, uh, Deontay. Yeah. I'd be on the phone with him, and he'd be like, God damn, what the fuck? I'd be like, damn. Bro, you alright? He like, man, this dude just missed the layup, man. Messing up my ticket. I'm just like, man. So I wanna keep, like, that's my source of entertainment, watching sports. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wanna keep it that. I don't wanna be mad at these guys and stuff for messing up my money and stuff like that. So but I do it a little bit. Yeah, I've been interested in starting that, so I'm gonna make sure I get up with him because I've been hearing about it and just the rise of it. And I always look at things very differently and just how the pandemic. You know, it hurt a lot of us, it took a lot of us out, of course, but it also birthed new hustlers, birthed new entrepreneurship, and I just be telling everybody that it's so much money to be made out here if you just apply yourself, and it just beats anything that you have ever done when you got it from your talent, your gift, and stuff like that, and your drive, man. And, and I, I got a COVID story, man. Like I said, I hate to be selfish when it comes to COVID because I know people that lost loved ones. I lost loved ones. Uh, my cousin lost loved ones. My sister-in-law uh, lost her mom, a great woman, man. And, yeah. And I just hate to be selfish and, uh, and talk about things, but you know, you don't want to talk about your personal stories. You know? yeah. So I want to take the time out to say that you know, I'm going to the COVID situation. But man, so I host AU basketball tournaments, Calhoun County and Battle Creek. Uh, I was just about to quit in 2018 with Greg Patterson, a great friend of mine that's coaching in Fort Wayne. He, uh, you, you can ask him. Uh, he told me, so it was one of those situations where the diamond was right behind the rocks of you know, my, so I didn't quit, had my biggest tournament, uh, had 60 teams from five states, and uh, one Providence from Canada, biggest tournament, man, great, all on one campus, man, it was, it was beautiful, uh, started back coaching, uh, at Bridgeport, was assistant coach and coach marshal, shout out to Bridgeport, uh, coach marshal, we uh, we had one of the best years I I, I seen, man. They were saying we were gonna be number four in the TVC, but we ended up being number one in the state class B. I got the chance to coach some of my younger players that was in my AAU program that was you know growing up now, and man, we went 28, two and one, but COVID stopped us. Yeah. Uh, championship run. So that hurt. Now I can't throw my tournaments. Either, you know, uh, so I haven't thrown a tournament since 2019, and it, uh, it's really discouraging because, like I said, I was ready to quit, then I got blessed to have the biggest tournament. Then, a hundred year only thing that could stop what I had going on was a hundred year play, you know, and that's crazy. And I'm just like, well, sometimes you lose, you know, you just gotta accept it. But, uh, so that's you know, my coping situation, but just like you said, new hustlers. Now, I can walk in the grocery store and I hear people shout, hey, breakfast, man, you got some potatoes? <laughs> so, COVID brought that and I can, like, I cook breakfast this morning, we'll do it tomorrow morning. Uh, I just woke up and I got orders for tomorrow. So, it's, it's three years I've been cooking breakfast, man, and catering and I got some, uh, I got a chance maybe to cook for the Memorial Cup that's coming. Yeah. So, uh, different partnerships. Shouts out to Ramon Kelly at the Blue Note. Uh, it's not open right now, but he gave us a chance to, uh, Post our mimosa and brunch, and you know, just gave us a chance to have a platform to do some things. You know what I'm saying? So like anybody that's helping or you know treating anybody that's 
you know, treating nobody good, you know what I mean? I'm all for that. We can treat each other bad all day, you know? That's, that's you know. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. But that's my little COVID story, you know, crying a little bit, you know. I, I, I almost <laughs> shed it too, man. So, yeah, it's all good, man. We human, we human. But yeah, man, like, I want you to just really, like, Oh, go into depth with the with the breakfast stuff, because like, okay. you know food is one of those industries that just it gets a lot of flack because oh, customers and people expect perfection. Because I'm a cook yep. at the hospital, yep. so you can't oh uh, <laughs> be half stepping. <laughs> and I am one of the guys that say pause, like the uh, camera and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, think about this. You got to put that in your mouth. Like, whatever you cook, you got to, somebody got to, you know, like, that's the most sacred thing. So you got to prepare that, man. Uh, so you want to talk about, like, how it started or just about the, just the customer aspect of it? Like a little bit. Okay. Uh, well, my girlfriend at the time was over. Like I say, it was COVID. You know, it ain't too much to do. Everything was closed or closed early, pretty much. So it kind of goes back. I always cook breakfast. Always had it on. Uh, like if I cook for my daughters, if I cook for myself after work, I post it. You know, so I, I always had these dishes and stuff like that. Yeah. But I always told my best, one of my older best friends, uh, Andre Beverly. Uh, I wanted a breakfast spot. I was thinking about getting the old KFC across the river for uh, Crazy Rays. Uh, uh, just wanted to do breakfast there. But yeah. you know that didn't go through. Or that, but that was just my, you know, vision. Yeah. Man, one thing for sure about my parents, my mom before I went to school always had some type of breakfast for me. If it was a nice size breakfast, or if it was toast and oatmeal or malted milk. Same with my granddad. You know, I, I was a granddad child, so I grew up with my granddad. He always made breakfast. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I, I always had to eat breakfast because I get on my bike and leave. The whole day and come back. So that might be the only time I eat until nighttime. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless it's some candy and stuff like that. So long story short, my girlfriend at the time we woke up. She just really just hit me out of a little dream. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start selling breakfast. She didn't shoot me off in that, but it was like, okay, you know, So I sat there for two days, made a website, made a menu, took my old pictures, cropped them up, and you know, started. Uh, I want to shout out to my former AAU players and my former basketball players because I used to have them over in my house for breakfast. Like during that time, it'd be like six of them, seven of them watching sports and just eating breakfast. So it was kind of like a trial and error, you know what I mean? And, and once I put it on Facebook, man, the orders just started flying in, bro. Uh, it, was, it was crazy because one of my classmates, Harry Taylor, uh, he passed, rest up Harry. Uh, he was killed a few years ago, and uh, he had posted on Facebook when Bring Her In had shut down. Yeah. At the time, he had posted the breakfast man shut Bring Her In down. It was like, you know, I like, don't say that, because, you know, we doing donation type deal, and people come to the house, but, uh, outside of that, I just appreciate everybody that supported, everybody with the inboxes, calls, anybody that I catered for, man, it's, it just, man, really unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And congratulations on that because it's just so amazing when you are able to, you know, pick up a new skill or just, you know, have ambition to succeed. And one door closes and always another one will open. Like they are from the Bible. My father's disciple. Yeah, that's life, man. You know, uh, just how you have to deal with life. Like, you know, you got to deal with God's test. That's what I got. Like, I got to be around and just kind of remind him, man. And, uh, I think you some of the things you've been through. Um, so just, you know, I'm giving you a cheat sheet. Yeah, on how to deal with these things to get further. Ahead of the situation quickly. Uh, it's, it's, it's so much in this life that we can't control. And that's the thing. Uh, so we gotta stay praying up and uh, make sure uh, stay around positive energy. Because, you know, but it all, but for real, man, even what you're doing, man, uh, it's just giving people the, 
uh, outlet, you know, even if, like, some people probably never, I probably never said some people this, you know, um, that's what I like about some podcasts. Sometimes people get into telling too in depth stories, like on the in, this, in the industry and stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm all here for the entertainment, but you know, what I'm saying I don't want to throw nobody under the bus and stuff like that. Like I say, because uh, you know, yeah, it's just it's all fun, but sometimes I try to you like your guests because. You know, we get enough of that toxicity, you know, and it seems like toxicity creates, um, like, shock value and yeah. go viral and this yeah. and that, but we need to okay. really stop um, encouraging that. And, right. and I just think that um, a lot of the masses has low intention spans, so the first thing they're going to pick up is the bad, because they're not going to stick around for the good, but right. you got to um, feed yourself, and... I go just with um, doing daily affirmations and speaking highly of myself and the people who hasn't heard that they would call it arrogance or cocky but to me you know just like a plant you know a plant don't grow until you water it you gotta water yourself and I believe in that and also just you know your company you keep and stuff because we have to watch that because everybody don't always be on the same page or people be having hitting agendas and don't really be happy for you and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. So, company keep, man, like, right now, I kind of been doing those things. So, I've been kind of, like, like being by myself lately, you know what I mean? Just to get some thoughts. Like, not just secluded, but... Sometimes you gotta reset, you know. Uh, yeah. But like you said, you gotta take care of yourself. Like e even just like with your, you know, childrens and family and stuff like that. Like I can't yeah. be there for my kids, my two beautiful daughters, if I'm not together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I gotta work daily, constantly to put myself together. You know, I had to explain this to one of my friends, uh, one of my best friends. And like, just right now, man, I'm just not, you know, right on that. I'm, just chilling, you know, I go to work, I go home, I'm just locked in, you know what I mean? I'm locked in because I got some things that I want to do, some things that I, that I know. They say what they say about insanity is doing the same thing over and over and thinking you're going to get the different results. Yeah. I'm not insane, so I don't want to keep doing the same old thing and keep getting, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, uh, I really... Uh, so don't try, I'm trying to take, like, say, like, you, you like giving your daily affirmations. Mm -hmm. I may take something away from that and try to feed myself, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just about who energy, who got the, you know, the positive energy that's going to link on and stuff like that. And people are going to say what they want. Every, like, you know, especially around here. So, yeah. uh, I didn't see so much just back and forth about simple stuff like banana pudding or whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? So, people are going to say what they want. Uh, I'm just so happy that I will say this, you know, I am real happy that nobody just been blasting me on Facebook and sacking all of my breakfast. <laughs> I'm just happy because I just seen people get blasted about food and stuff like that. So hopefully that means I'm doing a well enough job. Uh, I ain't saying everything been perfect. Because uh, like somebody just ordered something the other day and I put cheese on it and they asked for no cheese. So I couldn't do anything but... Uh, Make another box. Don't charge them for it. It's those type of things. Most people be like, well, you know, you can't take it off or just something like, oh, no, don't be negative like that, you know, so. Yeah, it's just what kills me is that they don't understand, like, mistakes is going to happen. Even I made mistakes with my platform. It's times that, like, people are supposed to come, yeah. and then I forget, because usually I don't like to write anything down. I keep it into my head, or I just, um, you know, kind of, like, store it. Then I go back on Facebook, like, oh, okay, this person was supposed to came, and stuff. So I'm trying to, like, force, uh, so happy, because I'll be
supports people. I don't want to. I like I neglected them and stuff. Like that. I, I'll be so dead tired, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I will fall asleep at the drop. Like you know what I'm saying. Like when I gotta get my rest, I gotta get it. Like so. I mean, and that's one thing I did do when I was younger. I, I didn't. I had so much going on. I didn't sleep. But now I make sure. I can't wait to get home to get to my spot. Like when I leave here, I'm going home. I'm sitting in my spot like Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Watch some basketball. You know what I'm saying? I might cook something to eat because I'll be up at this time. But shoot, man. Like, it's, like I said, man, I'm 37, man. Like, uh, there's nothing out here in the streets for me. Being out here, unless I'm coaching, you know, and, and training and, or trying to, you know, build a business or a network. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, shoot. I'm in the house, man. I ain't no fool about Saginaw either. When you asked me about Saginaw, yeah, or, yeah, I love Saginaw there, but I ain't no fool now. No, I mean, I have my fair share of rough hoes, and you know, so uh, that's another reason I, you know, sit back. Yeah, and I want you to just talk about yeah. something like, okay, because we all have one of those stories that we feel like our backs was against the wall, and how would you able to overcome it? Uh, so I don't want to get So I'm going to touch on something But I, I like I say Because uh, like I say I was in a situation With a, a friend Yeah uh, Or whatever the case But like that was between us But it got public Because you know I had a sponsor Tomorrow was the Tomorrow was the sponsor of this, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case, yeah. And for our AAU stuff, or you know, whatever the case, and for three or four years, and I actually bring three mana on uh, whatever the case. And, uh, we started Green Woody Lee, I started Green Woody Lee with them. And, you know, I didn't care about the name, I was just trying to get resources for these kids. Because, like I said, I was taking these kids all over the place on the dime of one NFL star, he worked hard for me. I used to cut kids out for disrespecting the Jordan brand and stuff like that because I know how hard he worked. So I'm not going to get too in-depth into it because, like I said, that's our situation. Yeah. But what had happened was things changed on how spending was when we changed. So I got a car or whatever the case. And at the time, I was broke. So I had a business car with my name on it through the organization. So uh, I just had a house fire. And then my uh, ex-wife, we just moved back into a house with my daughter. The case, spent all that, you know, all that money, and I didn't have anything in the fridge. So I was getting ready to go to Lansing with four teams, four or five teams to take care of these kids with this car, yeah. you know, or whatever it takes. Man, I went to Walmart, spent three hundred dollars to fill my goddamn fridge. So it's long story short, you know what I'm saying? We went back and forth, or whatever the case. And it was a picture painted. Uh, like I said, our conversation was supposed to be between us, and we just moved on. You know, we just split, and I kept on doing my thing. But that wasn't that. Uh, it was leaked that you know, like when you told me, like it's gonna be between us. And the next day, immediately, I got people coming that don't even know anything about any basketball and asking about me still. So for a long time, it was a stigma around me as a thief that he didn't want to make jokes and stuff like that. So yeah. that was cool. So my back was against the wall. So I. I say this, sometimes your absence is stronger than your presence or stronger than your presence. When I was there, everything was running smooth, and when I wasn't, it just wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you can take it how they want, you know, whatever the case. Like I said, I'm not going to go into this and that because our families are close. Like, his best cousin is my best friend. You know, we're going to party together, you know, so I just, I never did want to take it there like that and, and talk, but... Anything that I told anybody, or it's a lot of stuff I didn't tell a lot of people, I told him face to face yeah. in conversation. And I'm talking about not nicely either, so it wasn't like, and like I said, I'm funny. Sometimes once I get mad, I can get a little mean, so you know what I mean? Uh, so I can make things sting and hurt. So 
My back was against the wall for a little bit. I had the no sponsor. I'm around his panel by myself. Got a team to travel and stuff. So, you know, the basketball stuff kind of doing the I ain't no fool. You know, I'm going to want their sponsors or whatever the case. Things change. Yeah. But passion still is helping these kids, you know, so that's what I continue to do. So that's why I decided to do a tournament. So I didn't have sponsorship. So I said, let me make some money so I can get these kids to turn. Yeah, if you bought my ass story, man, you need a movie. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get this podcast and stuff together, man. I want to do a documentary about this stuff, man, because, bro, the, 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 the things we've seen, bro, I've been traveling all over the world with these guys. Uh, Coach Dawkins, man, like, like I say, I, I came back to Saginaw and seen my brother coaching and said, That's exactly what I do not want to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, my brother was coaching girls at South. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to coach, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to college. It was tough playing there. You know what I'm saying? I had to sit out a year. And, and I didn't have enough money. Got sent home. Had to come home in the middle of the season for two weeks. Somebody said they had $2,000 for me to go to this college. I sat somewhere. They didn't have it for me. Like, man, I'm talking about going into a cafeteria. Because I went to an all-white school. So these guys are, got money. Like, houses on the lakes and stuff. There's no worse feeling laughing and joking with your white friend is going to the cafeteria and you try to swipe your car and they say you gotta talk to the dean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta talk to the dean. You gotta go talk to the building. So it's a middle of the basketball scene. I have to come home for two weeks. So that type of stuff, man. So I was kind of done with basketball. So when I came to see my brother coaching, I was like, man, I ain't going to do that. You know, but my good friend, DeAndre Clement, he went to Olivet when I was in Alabama. And we came real close. And uh, he had told me uh, that he needed some help. And like I said, he, he was real instrumental in helping me my last year of college. So uh, I said, you know what? Okay, let me just coach, volunteer some sixth grade kids. He was doing a, a, a first step program at the school, so he couldn't be there right on time. So I just be there to me that day, and we coached together. We started that that year. We won the championship. Class B, we was, uh, the B class of Warriors A championship. We the other century A team. So after that, uh, Dorian Dawkins actually in the raid to coach A U. So Team Pride, uh, which is by Lou Dawkins and uh, Chris Dawkins, you know the Chris Dawkins story, right? Yeah. So, you know, I used to coach them my first year back. Yeah. So I stepped away at the Didi Pass, man. I don't even want to go down there because I definitely tear up, man. At the Didi Pass, I stepped away from the game, man, uh, coaching for a year and had my first child, man. That was one of the toughest things that I dealt with. Uh, rest up door and ice cream, man. Because I had seen nobody play basketball better than him at that age. And me and Ray, man, we was devastated when that happened. Because actually when it happened, we were supposed to go down there and coach him. And we just sitting there waiting and Coach Dawkins is driving. And they already going to try to save me. Okay. So, uh, we stopped coaching. There's a young man by the name of Terry Sparks. Uh, and Stone Robeson. Rest in peace, Stone. <laughs> you know, a, lot of, a lot of my players passed too. So they asked me, to, you know, after I coached them at Willie E. Thompson, they asked me I should do the AU after we had a little success. So. Sure. That's why I say I don't like talking about this situation so much because he's not a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our situation was bad. You know, he, man, out of any athlete that's from here, he's done way more than what he's supposed to do. You know, try it. You know what I mean? So, so that's the. Uh, that's that situation. So I'm really like not pushing for like uh, to have a beef or, or whatever the case. But at the same time. Got to tell your truths. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I don't condone, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, what I'm saying, talking about people and all this other stuff. But it's just at the same time, it's like I encourage everybody to tell their story. It's love. 
people that need to have that, you know, but respectfully, you know, because some people go up on that. Right. But yeah, um, you know, he's he just, he was, he was a great guy, man. Like, just hear you talk and, and really just convey your message to you. It's just, you don't know, get that no more. You don't know, really get it. Because it's, it's a sacrifice not only when you have your own family, but you have like a total different responsibility to your kids that you coach and stuff like that. And we don't really like have a whole lot of mentors out here and stuff. So I can move fast because I don't think I'm mentoring anybody. Body, but I feel like I'm inspiring all ages and stuff like that. I just uh, I to I I I I to I I Countless hours, it's just countless. Um, it's really mental than yeah. anything. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, like I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. Appreciate that, man. Uh, we got. I mean, it's just a day to day. Like you gotta yeah. just like raising kids or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even like dealing with the kids uh, from the AAU. Just like you, you see something in them, you know. Uh, they ain't like man. You wanna take care of them, like. I coach kids from Flint, Jackson, yeah. Kalamazoo, on okay. my AAU team, uh, Lansing, Toski. Like, one of the best things that I ever, because I want to consider myself not to be racist. Like, everybody going to have a racist moment where they say a racist thing or something like that. I love all people, like, you know what I'm saying? So I can conversate with But one of the best things that I, 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 I kind of like, Put my hat on. I always got like one random or two white kids on my AUT. <laughs> I don't know, you know, why their parents make you know, feel comfortable sitting them out here with this guy from Sagitt all and the these young men and stuff like that. But it's always been like that. And, I, and, and that was just like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? They got that, you know, they get ain't none of that. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, I don't know what I'm But yeah, that's, 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 that's like, everything that you got going on is pretty solid. Uh, like you say, 621, uh, some episodes. Yeah. Uh, I seen you got my, uh, uh, my homeboy James on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it all come back. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the coolest thing, I would say, like, I treat every episode like it's the greatest hits album. Because I really worked and dedicated and just really learned a lot from each guest that ever came on my show. Because that's why I really don't be tripping about just life and trials and tribulations because I had heard everyone's story and just explain how they was able to overcome things and they just understand things, man. And I just, like, appreciate the responsibility because everyone is a, uh, equipped to play that role. And we all have a role in life. And, and, and it's just, like, rewarding, man, because I didn't never really thought I would be in this position. And just give me and, and I tell everyone, like, just be grateful for what you have, the people that you still have, because life will humble you, but you're not humble already, so it's just all about just making sure that we do our best as individuals to just inspire just our community, because we are in this together, whether people know it or not, like, whether rank, rather salary, or whatever, we are in this together. Yeah, I didn't mean to, you know, um, go into your psyche like that. <laughs> but, but it's, it, but it's, but this is, this is good stuff, man. You know, and I, and I'm, and I'm happy because we, you know, we joke a lot and this and that. But you gotta understand our origins, you know. You gotta understand where we come from, and so we can 
know how we are today. You know, it would be less past judgment, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's good to joke. Like I said, I joke. I get up in the morning and, and sometimes I do it just to get like, you know, people to shock, like you say, shock value to see that I'm cooking breakfast and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I cheat a lot on the comedy flows and jokes and stuff like that. Man. But, like, in reality, though, know, man, I, I can't lie. Like, uh, it just became so much of a big part of my life, just me being out in the public around here with the coaching and stuff. And growing up. Yeah. So like when I see him, I'm like, I can't go anywhere without seeing any of them. So I make sure I don't talk basketball. Right? Yeah. I make sure I talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, how you doing? Like, how your people doing? Like, you know, son, like, you know what I'm saying? Because he did a lot of that basketball stuff. Uh, just like when I used to tell my coaches, like, you know, hear a coach talking to like one of the high school players about chicks and stuff. Like, I'm like, man, they got uncles and cousins that's going to talk about all that. Like, man, if you ain't delivering a, a good message about being in a relationship, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case may not, you know what I'm saying, like, oh, oh, yeah, you got no hope, like, man, no, I don't do that with my kids, like, you know what I'm saying, like, I always talk to the most women, you know what I'm saying, not like that, like, you know what I'm saying, I got friends, you know what I'm saying, I got my own peers that I can holler at and talk to, you know what I'm saying, so, I think it's a time and place for everything, man, but, uh, man, I just, I just, I'm just happy like a lot of these kids that I coach was pretty good at basketball. A lot of them didn't, you know, uh, exceed to what they might wanted to exceed to. But like I say, the one young man, Terry Sparks, was real good. Uh, he didn't end up finish playing high school basketball and stuff like that. Or whatever. So uh, he had some other kids younger. So, but when I, I would say this, all the kids that I coach that I know of for sure, man, is pretty good fathers. And he's one of them. He takes care of all his kids. Like, they all with him. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, anything ain't been easy, anything. You know, he sacrificed so much. Like, you know what I mean? So, and that's what I was aiming for. Like, uh, uh, basketball was just a tool to get people to have more understanding. So, hopefully, I was uh, able to succeed in that aspect. Oh, you feel it, man. It's true. If you got, you know, kids that you used to coach and they had elevated to fatherhood and doing the right thing, you pretty much exceeded all expectations, man, before. Yeah. You know, it's just really important to bump into the right guy or to the right person, because that right person or the right guy is going to... You know, mold them you know, and just alter their entire life. Cause I was fortunate to meet my mentor Brian Pruitt. I met him at 15 years old. But just the fact, like over 20 years later, just to bring him on my show. And we just I, like reminisce, man. Like that's the greatest gift ever. Like, Brian Pruitt, a good guy. Yeah, he got man. the daughters that play basketball too, right? Yeah, yeah they uh, play with my niece, man. Brian Pruitt, a real good dude, man. Yeah, he um, saved my life so many times. So I would say like he really got me on this path because he allowed me to be vulnerable and to be like humble. Because I was just always like ashamed. Cause my size and stuff like that, everybody like, man, if I was your size, man, I would be taking this to lunch with you, man, I would be so much invincible, you know what I'm saying? But no, like, I never really thought I was going to get this size at first, man, because I was short and stuff, and I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> believe me, I've been, listen, until I got to the 11th grade, I was the shortest person on every, like, every basketball team I was playing on. I, was just, I never thought I'd be able to dunk. I never thought I'd be close to six foot. Yeah. That's how short I was. So I believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's just one summer, man. I I think it was like the summer before ninth grade. I went from five six to six two. So I came to the hill, and everybody was like, "Damn, what happened, man? You, you been eating like that? You been eating people? Like, no, I just, but it was just it was just cool yeah. because um, I still like remained that same person. I still had compassion and stuff like that, and I was just able to just remain like that because we all have different. We all have different of us. And I became dark for like a few years because at that time it was just like, man, I was doing everything good. I was treating people right, letting people come stay in my home and 
Yeah. Sleep on my yeah. couch, bed on, you know, yeah. rent free and everything. But yeah, I was losing so many people and so many things was happening to me. So I became dark. I became bad a little bit, but then it didn't fix anything. And so you know how certain people go through things and go through life. And then they become dark, and they become bad, most definitely. Just because nothing else works, like they just really feel robbed, you know? So he, he just taught me just so many things. He told me, like, look, it's okay. Like, you do it. Like, you don't have the moments when you fall short, but you just get back up eventually. And I just always encourage people to get back up. Those it really just tests to see how real you are. Like what you speak of is, you know, can you walk it instead of talking? So that's how I live. I walk like I talk. Yeah. That's that's man. That's that's exactly how things should be, man. Uh, that's why I don't try to take anything for granted because, like, one thing just to touch on that point, I learned from uh, that. And it's messed up sometimes, but like, even when you're going through something, you always got to tap in to say, like, there's always somebody that may be uh, going through something worse than yeah. you. know what I'm saying? And, and don't take that for granted. Like, you know, you got to be blessed. To, every Everything is a blessing, man, because there's some people that can't walk right now. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, or see, or just, you know what I'm saying? Use that, you know, use the extremities, bro. Like, you know how much, we got so much to be thankful for, and we overlook it. So, you just gotta, really like you say, it's all the test. It's all the test. <laughs> Absolutely. And just, you know, what you're doing, man, like, I will always support, you know, so I still gotta try some of your own dishes and stuff oh, yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, man, I'm trying to, everybody want me to get a food truck, but I'm just like, it's different with breakfast, but then I want to have a spot so I don't have to work super hard to promote, because, you know, you get the food truck, you got to tell everybody where you at, yeah. each day, and if I got a spot, you know, it's listed. You know. Well, that's for me, you know, and, um, like I said, I will always, like, you know, say promote, promote, and stuff. Like that, because I'm going to edge a flyer or edge a logo into the video and stuff like that in all my videos because I just want to put people on to the food and stuff like that. Right. But yeah, so how and why um, you decided to go into my arena? <laughs> I want to know that. Like the podcast. Thing. Or the podcast. Like, like, okay. Yeah. So. Man. So I uh the people that I do be around outside of like you know you know what I mean like uh, uh so Markel Bradshaw, Terrence Robinson. Mm -hmm. I'm around like I've been around Terrence Robinson since I like I say I, my dad coached him for AAU with Reds Robinson and stuff. So I've been around T Row. He got a picture that he always share for my birthday. You know what I'm saying? I'm about this big. You know, all them guys, you know what I'm saying, in whatever case, they're in the middle school or whatever the case. Yeah. So I've been always around them. Uh, Tenora Shepard, Anthony Robinson, those are my brother best friends. So when we get together, man, and talk sports or just be around each other, it's one of the funniest times. Like, I have a, you know, it's always a good time. Like, even being around Eugene, so any of my brother friends, like, my, my brother got some of the best friends. Like, I mean, like, that's accomplished or doing something. Like, the twins, the t shirt they all doing good people. Uh, you know, Charles Rogers, you know what I'm saying? These guys all did something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it, these guys are some of the funniest individuals I know. So, Markel, you know, he's one of my former players. He's one of the guys I uh, ended up coaching uh, first at uh, Sacramento High School. He's a real good basketball player. And actually, he's a hell of a student. He's a very good second in his class. But this dude is a character. So he would come around with older people and call them nephews. You know what I'm saying? So and that's why we get the uncle nephew. But me and uh, my, my, my good friend in Dallas, we always talk uh, about uncle nephew to each other. We call each other nephew. We call me uncle. When I'm asking, oh, no, I call my nephew when I got to teach him something, you know what I'm saying? It's like a joke, a play on words. Now, with this podcast, when you were saying, when you had uh, you had hinted on something about a movie, I want to do a documentary, though, about, you know, yeah. I want to do uh, basketball, Saginaw, 
Michigan type of documentary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I also want to do a sitcom. Yeah. Okay. With this breakfast, and I want to call it the breakfast man because you wouldn't believe what. During COVID, celebrate from home. What was going on? Like, it ain't just me just serving breakfast, man. I'm talking about. It was crazy. So it's like one of the things that can be put into the comedy, the yeah. drama, you know what I'm saying? So I want to do like a, a short little sitcom. So that's why, I, but I do want to touch on the, uh, the Saginaw basketball scene. I kind of want to do it around what I had seen since I've been looking. So I thought the podcast game was heating up around everywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I just felt like, all right, well, T-Roll got some great connections. Now we gonna do some, 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 you know, some stuff to educate. And we wanna entertain a little bit, but we don't wanna get too loose with it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, we wanna have fun with it. Like you know what I'm saying? So, and that's what I, what I'm doing. Because I know some people will have to tell negative stories. If you tell a negative story about somebody, big them up. Because if you have to deal with them in some light form, they have to be some type of positive. Just oh, like, absolutely. Just like the one situation, like, right? yeah. yeah, that situation happens, but yeah, this dude's been doing, like, I can't take away from what he done, you know what I mean? Yeah. But now, personally, I'm going to attack him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and within our friends in our group chat, actually, I made him get out the group chat because I was on his ass in there. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? That's just how I be. Yeah. But, uh, that type of stuff, bro, you know. But that's that's the only reason uh podcast. Then I think, you know, I, I thought we could do it, you know what I mean? Uh I want to I wanted to start doing the entertainment type stuff a little bit. Oh yeah, that's no doubt, man. And so I hope I can be a guest one day. Oh most definitely. <laughs> you already know. This is my first time being on a podcast. I was crying on Facebook the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying. I'm like, damn, it must be me. I'm looking in the mirror like, damn, is it me? <laughs> No, no, man. It's all, it's all good, man. And, 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 I, and like I said, man, I, I really enjoyed this, man. And, and um, so whenever you want to come back, just let me know. All right, man. Yeah, that's fine. Like I said, man, this video about anything, anything I can assist with. Like I said, I can people. Uh, I do, I did see one thing that I did want to talk about that you had brought up. Okay. Uh, okay. You had said it on podcast yeah, about ahead. yourself about uh, being borderline autistic. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. I know they, you know, my nephew, uh, you know, they they were more autistic or whatever because you can see some. But man, one of the smartest young dudes, like he know Russian, he know like three different languages, too, and he playing violin and so like. And they kind of, you know, what I'm saying, I think I'm the dumb one. You know, what I'm saying, I'm the one that's the outcast. F. And like, cause I see it a lot. It's autism going around, and they and, and a lot of parents express how smart they kids are. Like, and, yeah. and I be like, I know, cause my nephew is yeah. Yeah. a genius. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he's labeled like that. And I, I want, I want people to stop the negative connotation because I will go on the forefront to say I'm the one that has a problem. Yeah. yeah. My nephew can speak three, four different languages, no top math, no, you know what I'm saying? So that's the type of stuff. Uh, so I, I, and, and if you ever want to touch on that, man, let's, you know, in the future, you can touch on that. Oh, yeah, man. And, and people get that, like, so misconstrued because they only look at it as a disability. But it's just all about how you learn and how you process information. But it's not really like a, a crutch and stuff. So I just wish that. Yeah, it really get more into depth in society because it's pretty taboo in society because a lot of people don't understand the traits and understand the joints. And I just think that it just get a bad rep. But to me, um, being that, it really has to find me because when it comes to education, when it comes to other things, I'm sharp and stuff. And I'm, I feel like I'm a genius. And stuff. Um, I learn things every day, and I just always search the knowledge. But it just, I learn, you know, just from like watching people who's considered uh, normal or took the normal classes, 
ain't doing shit like that yeah. anyway. Cause Kanye West artistic right. too, right. but he, he's a genius. He's yeah. a billionaire. Yeah. So yeah. what that tell people? Yeah. No, most definitely. No, I just thought I'd just say that because I had you know something in, in common with you on that, and that's one of the episodes. I, I'm not sure if you had someone on, or you might have been by yourself. And I seen you had spoke on that, yeah, or, or posted that. And I just want that. That's something that stuck out to me, man. And that's like I say, man, you don't you never let. Like, just like man, it's my dad, man. Dad, man, had to have his leg amputated up to his calf. And you can't even tell. He walks around, bro, with like, like no cane, no walker, nothing like that. So it's it's nothing that can handicap. So as long as you got a mind, you see what uh. What's the guy that has that used to be a uh, cure bomb? You know that I don't hold back. Yeah. Homie, so don't try. I'm skull crack. Yeah. Caught on fire. Look like the ghost rider. Let's talk about this. Oh, let's talk about this. Oh, let's talk about this. Yeah, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. Yeah. So, like, man, come on. Like, if he can do what it, like, it's, like, you can't tell me. No, it's no boundaries. No. I appreciate you, bro. Oh, I appreciate you, too, man. And, 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 and like, the last thing, man, is so, uh, it's been a five-year plan. Five years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to redo it. It's for COVID. Because I'll just be at the end of my other five year plan. Tell you the truth, man, I, I, I don't even have a plan right now. Like, not five years from down the line. Only thing that I can plan for for five years out of line is my daughter's graduation. Mm -hmm. Anything that has to do with my kids. So that's what I'm doing now, man. Being a singer, watching my daughter's pom pom events. I put my daughter in gymnastics, track and field, stuff that they want to do, stuff that they want to accomplish. Uh, you know, so these next five years, that's what I'm. That's my plan. And really, really, like I say, I'm not. Not in my brother's life, but to really uh, focus on their maturation. Mm -hmm. so, outside of that, they yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. was that was great, man. And again, thank you for coming on the show, sir. And we're going to make sure that we get you all um, popping around here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. All right. Appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate you too, bro. Yes, sir.